Okay, here's our piston rings for Manly. Uh, part number 46620 ST-8, so ST is a stainless steel. These are total seal rings. The Manly piston rings come with uh, a lot of information on these directions here. Uh, we'll take a look at this in a minute to figure out what we want to uh, file our uh, top ring and second ring down to. But down here is the, it's got the ring orientation on here and uh, the oil expander uh, ring gap range is going to be in this area. I got the wrist pin going. This, this image isn't showing up very well uh, on these directions, but uh, this is looking down at the top of the piston and your wrist pin going across like that. So if we take piston number one, got piston number one here, and this is pointing that direction, we're going to put the oil expander ring in here uh, in its groove first, and it's uh, the gap is going to be in this area up here. And here is the oil expander ring. It's the only one that's gold. It looks like a little uh, spring. We'll put that in. Doesn't matter which side is up on this one. It goes in the bottom groove. And again, the gap now, the gap, the gap for it is up in here. Next, we're going to look at our oil rings. Uh, you're going to have two of these uh, on each piston. These come in the same packet with the oil expander ring. These are very thin. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the cylinder and get a measurement. The gap on this uh, should be 15 thousandths, minimum of 15 thousandths, and a maximum of 30 thousandths. So we'll put these in and see what we get. Okay, so I like to use the cylinder that the piston is going to be going in. So we're working on so on, we're working on piston number one. Uh, so we're going to put our oil ring inside cylinder number one. And then use the piston to square it up. And with our set of feeler gauges, we'll go to 15 thousandths. We want to make sure that fits in there. And it does. And now we'll take our 30 thousandths and make sure it does not fit in. And it does not. These ones are kind of tricky here with the, since they're so thin, if you get one side, uh, you want them basically even with each other. If you get one side up or down, uh, if you get the gauge off center somehow, uh, you can get some inaccurate reading. So really take your time when you're when you're measuring your, your piston rings uh, and you're filing these uh, if you feel like you don't have a good reading on it just slide it up some grab your piston re-square re it up and then double check and make sure that uh, both the ends of it are even okay according to our chart and our directions uh, we want to have the bottom oil ring gap over here and then the top oil ring gap over here so the first one we'll put in we'll put the gap this one's going to go underneath the oil expander. Now we can put our top ring on there. Take your time with this. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult on the top one because there's less room. We'll just spiral it around on there. And so now we have our... Uh, oil expander on there and we got our upper and lower oil rings again the gap for these the bottom oil ring is over here the top oil ring is over here in this area and then the oil expander ring gap is up here and we'll double check that again later before the piston actually goes in now we can start on our second groove uh, piston ring so this one uh, is a little bit softer a little bit easier uh, to file on there's a couple different ways you can file on it uh, if you have just a hand file, you can try and you can file it down. It might take a little while, uh, maybe a hand grinder or something. Um, there's other ways you can do it. There's this, which it gets mounted uh, to the workbench. If you're going to use this style, put the ring in uh, somewhere like this, and then uh, I would always turn it this way. Uh, by hand while putting pressure and ideally you only want to file on one side uh, of the ring 
that way uh, one side is going to be shiny and one side is not going to be shiny and if these if your ring gaps gaps butt up against each other uh, they'll both be shiny so you'll know that you had uh, your rings butted up against each other uh, if they're both shiny and also on these the part number is going to be up they do have a little uh, beveled edge on the inside uh, and that on the second on the second ring is going to be pointing down so it's on this bottom side the easiest way to remember is that if it's got a dot or if it's got a part number most of the time that's going to be in the up position okay before we start grinding on our piston rings we need to find out what gap do we want to put them at so uh manly directions have uh, a, a bunch of different formulas on here uh, that you can double check and so we're going to go with uh if you got mid boost which is up to 15 uh, medium boost which is 15 to 30 so let's do uh, let's see mid boost up to 15 uh, you take the bore and you times it by 0 0.0055 for the top and the second ring okay so our bore is 3.572 times 0 0.0055 equals 19 six so about 20 thousandths would be a ring gap for mild boost up to 15 so let's see medium boost we would go 3.572 times 0 0.007 which is what it says in the directions here and we got 25 so we may be in the area between 15 to 30 uh, so I'm going to shoot for 23 to 24 uh, thousandths ring gap. This is a tool I use. It's Total Seal uh, Ring Filer. This works really well. You put this in. Tighten this down. And this knob over here moves it in and out. Move it in until it barely touches. It's starting to touch, back it off a little bit. And so now you can get an idea with this dial indicator uh, how much you're taking off of it. So you zero this out. Once it starts making contact, you zero it out. And then as you wind this in, uh, as you turn this in, it moves the, the uh, piston ring in and you get an idea. If you have one of these or if you get one of these, this is like, I don't know, six, eight hundred dollars for this kit. To me, it, it was totally worth it because you do that thing by hand, it just takes forever. Uh, or if you're filing by hand on, on anything, uh, it, it just takes forever. So this is really nice to have. Um, but what I will say is don't take this little reading for... Uh, you know an absolute reading. This is just kind of an idea uh, I, I would still creep up on it. So I know that these rings are going to be pretty much butted up against each other So I'm going to take about ten thousandths off of them and then put it in and see what we got It's got a little buffer over here, just hit it right there. You want to take any lip that might have came off of it, or came that any lip that might have went on there off. You can see the end of it's shiny now. And before we put this in, make sure you wipe it down really well after grinding on it. And stick it in. With our feeler gauges, I know it's going to be pretty small, so I'm going to start with the 5,000, see what that gets us. 5,000 fits. Go 9,000. 10.
11. Twelve goes. Thirteen. Fourteen. So fifteen doesn't quite go all the way down, it goes about halfway down. So I'd say we're right around fifteen. If you want to double check it, just pull your ring up some. Resquare it with the piston. Take our 15, and it doesn't go all the way down. So I'm going to take this over the machine, grind a little more on it. Okay, just got done grinding it. Let's see what we get this time. I think I took about 5 thousandths out of it, so let's see if we're close to 20. So here's our 20. And 20 does not go. Let's see, 19. 19 almost goes all the way down. So we're getting closer. Um, I'd say we're right at about 19 thousandths and we want to go 23, 24. So I'm going to go take a couple more thousandths out of this. Okay, let's see where this gets us. We're at 19, let's see if we can go with, let's see if we can go 22. 22 slides down, 23. 23 is not quite. I'm gonna take it back and just touch it one more time. Okay, I'm gonna put this in. Try our 23. 23 goes down. 24. 24 goes down a little tight. And 25 will not go. So these are right at 24 thousandths. If you go, if you're shooting, I like to choose two numbers. That's why I said 23 to 24. So if you end up going to like 25 thousandths or 26 thousandths, and you're shooting for 23 to 24 thousandths. To me, it's not going to be the end of the world. I would rather have these things a little bit wider uh, than uh, too tight because you don't want these buttoned up against each other. Uh, so if you do uh, go a little bit wider, end up you know 26 on a 24 target. Uh, to me, uh, that's not going to be the end of the world. So now this ring is ready to go in. So according to our diagram, the second ring, the second compression ring is going to be in this area. The gap is going to be in this area. And remember the, the part number uh, is going to go up top. So we're going to spiral this on there, get it in the groove. Now that ring is on there, we're good. Now we'll just repeat it for the top ring. Also, if you don't want to uh, spiral them on there, you can get one of these piston ring installers. It's a little tool, you put the ring in there, squeeze it, it spreads it out and get it around on there. Uh, this works pretty good as well too. When you move on to the top ring, this is gonna be a little harder to grind on because this one's stainless steel. Uh, again, this one has a bevel and the bevel is gonna be up. And with the, with the total seal rings, the part number is also facing up. So whenever I file on it, I file on it with the part number facing up. Whenever I measure it in the block, I do it with the part number facing up. And then when I put it on the piston, part number is facing up. So I'm on number eight now, and uh, a couple of notes before I move on to putting these in. Uh, when you switch over to this cylinder bank over here, now all the arrows are gonna be pointing that way for uh, forward. So when you look at the diagram that came with uh, the manly rings, now the top uh, compression ring is gonna be up here. So it's generally accepted that uh, the top compression ring is going to be uh, on the top side. Uh, so uh, for these these ones, it's going to be up over here, and then the uh, oil rings will be uh, right there, and then uh, the bottom one and the top one will go over there, and then your second compression ring will be down in this general area. The other thing I wanted to point out is uh, the oil rings, most of the oil rings that 
I've been uh, measuring on these have all been right at uh, 30,000 so they're right there on the the maximum what they recommend. Whatever method you're using to grind these rings you want to make sure that the ends of them are parallel towards each other. You should be able to see right here how uh, both edges are parallel with each other. And what I, what I mean by that is you have the two edges of your ring. So let's say that this, this part of my knuckle is the ring. If you file it, you can actually have the top portion sticking uh, too far out, or you can have the bottom portion too far in. And now you're measuring this the shorter area. Uh, you want those two edges to be uh, even or parallel with each other, and not like a V or an A shaped. Uh, this is probably one of the more uh, difficult parts and one of the most time consuming. Uh, when you're when you're building your engine and uh, you, you just really want to take your time and make sure that uh, you get good measurements and you sneak up on uh, your targeted uh, gap that you're trying to get and uh, you know just just go one at a time and just go slowly make sure you make sure you get uh, make sure you get good gaps all right now we've got all the pistons assembled all the rings filed and we can get ready to start putting them in.